right, we are going to go on to the fireside chat now. Jake is here. What's up, Jake? Paul's not. Paul Paul's is not. To his own chat. <laughs> Paul, Paul is not here, but that's okay. Uh, get thank you to everybody who has contributed. And look, we've got, oh my God, who is that? That's Barkley. It's Barkley. Yes. Welcome, Barkley. Um, maybe that maybe that can just be Paul for uh, for this. I <laughs> uh, but uh, no no absolutely not. I'm sure I, he was actually saying he had some uh, computer stuff, so uh, he'll probably be here in just a moment. I love the link uh, MLB logo. Logo way to go. Yes. Yeah. I stop. I sidebar you. You were about to do your little spiel for make sure I was. And I was. Yes. I still can. <laughs> so uh, so I'm gonna go off and do that right now. We've raised over thirty three hundred dollars. I. Oh, he doesn't have a link, is what he's saying. Uh, he, read the email, dumbass. No, okay. First of all, no cursing. <laughs> Second of all, Sorry. no need to be so aggressive. It's all right. It's a confusing thing. No, Jake. it's not. No, it's not. Jake. <laughs> all right. Paul, uh, Paul okay. Just so read the email. Go ahead. Hey, hey. We, <laughs> we're over thirty-three hundred raised uh, right now for PitchCon. William, thank you so much. Says uh, glad to be a small part of a great cause in the PL community. We're lucky that you were a part of it, William. Thank you so much for the donation. Uh, another anonymous coming in at 25. We have Mike. Thanks for putting on this great event. Keep up the great work at 100. Thank you guys so much for this. Uh, we raised yeah, 225 in that last one. Amazing. Let's see if we can get over 3,500 before the end of this. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, oh, yeah, Spore, yeah, Spore said some words yesterday that we just kind of moved on from. I see that. Uh, I know the I know the Suspedas guys. Did say something, I almost jumped in, but it's all right. We're not going to do any more cursing, right, Jake? We're good? No, that's actually probably the worst you'd ever get from me, honestly. <laughs> okay, good. See? See? Beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but yeah, thank you guys so much for all the, all the donation, donations, contributions. Uh, if you're not, uh, if you're just tuning in, it's for Feeding America. Half of everything we raise goes straight to them. Not even just proceeds, just half of everything we raise. Uh, so definitely do that. It's for a great cause. Four days of this. We're on day two. We're not even halfway there, Jake. And we're gonna have a real serious talk today. Sure. Real serious. Sure. For the like next the very hour. first you got time really I ever met you. Scared for a second. You're like, what? Serious? Oh no, and it's uh, not. Thank God. The, the, yeah, just the first time. So everybody doesn't know. I, I actually met Nick. It was the first? It was the first time. It was the one where we were in New York at the ballpark. Yeah, it's right? in the Staten Island Yankees. Yeah, but it was the one. Yeah, it was actually the Staten Island Yankees. And then, yeah. yeah, yeah. Paul introduced us, and then in between drafts, and like we were talking pitchers, and then in between drafts, people were like playing hitting in the cage a little bit nick's over here like hey you want me to throw you some pitches and i'm like all right this dude that used to throw 150 miles an hour and i'm a Not slap line close. driving line driving john olerud first baseman growing up and he's like let's get in the cage and he'll make you look stupid and i'm like uh, no i'm, I I'm, I'm throw, good dude. like I, I lobbed everything in <laughs> don't be ridiculous not to there mention was I legitimately can't, I can't smoke coming off of his throws and like, Sorry, hey, we're not sending you the link cage. score. My bad. Should have done it on Twitter too. Good to see you. Oh, I can't hear you too. Yeah, Jake. This, Jake, this, come on, this, come on, Jake. Ease up, this Jake. This dude's on Twitch all the time and can't even handle. Come on, anymore. come on. It's it's disorienting. All right, he did a great job last night. He's double dipping for PitchCon. Is he? Be kind. Yes. Is, is he your last is he night? Triple, triple. Oh, I thought he was on more than just two. He's, he's double dipping spore. Good to see you. I uh, and we have we have a new look today. If you guys saw it yesterday, it was all in the dark. Uh, and uh, we've we've got we've got new new stuff coming. To I actually be hot. I actually think Paul started growing that mustache when we first met. In Is that right? <laughs> yeah, I think that's. When I don't he even started. know. I don't even. Oh, it's daylight, Nick. I get it now, right? Because he actually gets like sunlight. I don't. I blocked it all out of my room. <laughs> It would just change everything. I want to be able to control my environment more. Um, we have some new donations coming in actually right now, which is incredible. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see what it who is from. Uh, Jenny, uh, fifty dollars. Uh, Jordan, I imagine that's from Suspense Family Barbecue. Renamas lives forever at a hundred. Oh, thank you so much, guys. Uh, and Jenny, actually, you'll see Jenny uh, with the NFBC panel as well. So. Thank you so much for contributing to this event. We're getting close to 3,500 now. We're at 3,451, which is amazing. Uh, let's see how far we can get for this one. Yeah, actually, if we get over 4,000 uh, in this one, yes, I have my comb. I will comb my hair. 
I promise <laughs> I will. I will see this. If you... <laughs> I can't control everything. Try. Says Paul Martin. Uh, if you could, Dylan Cease would be good. I wish he, yeah, man, I wish he comes together, man. I can't, like, all those times I'm negative, all I want for them is to be the best thing ever. Um, I don't mean to be. I don't want to be that person. We just have a new one come in, just under $70 from, I uh, let's see, from, from Greg. Thank you so much. I uh, we're, we're moving on. And look, we, we got rid of Spore. So, hey, this is going to be just you and me, Jake. All right. We're going to have a fireside without sport now. He'll come back, of course. <laughs> Do I need to go grab a If there's a one topic, you got to get off your chest, Jake. Something that's just like the world needs to know how I feel about this thing. What is it? How I need to feel. <laughs> I kept trying to get you to talk about MLB The Show on this episode. So Is that what you want to talk about? I just want to talk about the fact that I still – hey, Brandon McCarthy, of all people, agreed with me on this. So it's just this tells you that? how how amazing this take is, that there are few, if any, better – game mechanic pitching windups to use than Roy Halladay's back in the like I always the very first thing I did when I created a player was Roy Halladay's windup and Brandon McCarthy said the same thing so that that tells you how amazing doesn't he look Roy like him too doesn't he like have a lot of it he has some similarities oh I yeah. hear some sound does that mean Paul yeah we got it yeah. we have him I think yes! so. there we go um that's what have changed Charlie else. Morton's career too was getting Roy Halladay's uh use his windup yeah is that not one of the best deliveries in in history yeah i mean it is and it's it's clean mechanics and like i said it completely changed charlie morton uh who else did you say brandon mccarthy yeah mm. i remember like when morton changed it started to become like well maybe everyone just needs roy halliday's mechanics right oh is that what happened i remember he was like he was i'm just gonna throw harder now kind of like oh no he was there was a mechanic google too, charlie with, morton with... roy halliday he was just trying to emulate him oh that's and great. throw as hard as he could instead of babying it because he was like i think i think the story was M morton was like babying himself and still right. getting hurt all the time so he said well f it just chuck it as <laughs> yeah. hard as i can and then the results and then he was starting to see those results with philly and then he ripped his groin off the freaking bone and got hurt talk about that again. <laughs> like 10 yeah, that innings into the season that sounds um that that kind of disrupted that first breakout from charlie morton yeah. Uh, yeah. See, see um, Nick, anyway. I had to get this off my chest, and it's actually Please. a great topic. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Roy Halladay's mechanics are great, and they are great for video games too. They're just generally amazing. So, Sport, what yes. are we doing? And this isn't a traditional fireside chat. No. Uh, so, we're doing a fun fireside be? here. Um, I'm really excited about this because, it, we, you know, we brought up talking about like division winners and standard awards. It's like, well, there's still some unsettled stuff. Like Jake said, nobody thinks like Michael Conforto is going to sign somewhere and become MVP, but there's key pieces that can change. So we want to mix it up a little bit more and uh, kind of get into some awards, but for off the beaten path sort of things like favorite pitch, favorite stance, best announcers, uh, favorite middle reliever, dark horse for a no hitter, all sorts of stuff like that. And then at the very end, We'll throw out an MVP, a Cy Young, and a, and a Rookie of the Year that you guys aren't you guys aren't tied to. You can change your your official answers in March, or you yeah, can keep forever. these and say, "I said it all the way back in January that uh, you know Aaron Loop was going to win the Cy Young." Jake, I know that's your pick. Sorry to spoil it, <laughs> but uh, are you guys ready? Oh, of course. I, Let's I, go. I okay. Let's do this. Let me. And Nick, you can record and send the file, right? I'm on a secondary computer right now. The the one I was using yeah, last night. Yeah, well, for all the podcast stuff, you're going to get it uh, okay. sometime next week. Perfect. That's not a problem at yeah. all. So I'm going to call this episode 1000. <laughs> uh, Nick picks Patrick Corbin for Cy Young. You know, we'll see. <laughs> right, wait, wait, There's wait. your dark horse Cy Young. Right? I mean, I can see the list here. He's picking Dylan C's for Cy Young. <laughs> and MVP. Oh, you put him for both. You put him yeah, for rookie of the know, year too. You can't do that. He's not a rookie. You know, I think but... DC is comical. So, <laughs> oh, there's my little Sandlot poster, by the way. <laughs> anyway, by the way, the funny thing, speaking yes. of sidebar, the, the Brad Brad Ziegler when he was doing the podcast with me over at the Athletic actually called Patrick Corbin like two years ago. Like he thought he could win the Cy Young. He was he was like when, when he was legit good. Yeah, when he was legit yeah. amazing. That I mean, <laughs> we talked about him yesterday. Uh, Nick might have me not completely out. Like, I'm. I've got a. He's there's one no of my price, right? He's one of my sucker players. Like I just, I can't get away from him. I feel like Nick right. and Alex uh, feel the same, have the same sort I mean, of thing. At least based the on the podcast, news, he has the opportunity. He has the volume. Exactly. Thing. 
So exactly. At least has a chance. All right. Well, let's get started here. I'm going to call it episode 1007. Here we go. Hello and welcome to episode 1007 of The Sleeper and the Bus. It is a fireside chat. I'm your host, Paul Spohr, joined not only by Nick Pollock of the Firesides, but Jake Seeley joining us today. Gentlemen, great to talk with both of you. Nick, hello. What's going on? We're, we're at PitchCon. We're doing That's this. right. We are live at PitchCon. Jake, hello. Hey, I'm happy to be here with you two for sure. Where's uh, I'm where's thrilled? Where's 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 Saquon? Barkley, she's yeah, she already I made know her the, appearance know earlier. Ah, oh, I missed it, of course. You, you, I, you, so maybe I, she's coming I, back. I actually have a Barkley jersey now, too, by the way. I love it. I see I see that it's there. It's signed. I also have a Kyler Murray that as soon as I got it, he started playing like crap. So that, that's so wait, you time. were the hex? Yes, 100%. My, my, my fantasy team hates you. Well, usually my fantasy <laughs> teams love you. You are my fantasy football Sherpa. I make I make no beef about that. That uh, Whenever I give it, people ask, start set, I'm like, I'm just giving you Jake Seeley's info, y'all. <laughs> Like, I do not pretend <laughs> to know all this stuff. I just rely on Jake. We had a bad year this year, Jake. Thanks a lot, jerk. Yeah, anyway. You barely talked to me this year. What I know, I know, <laughs> because I wasn't doing well. Honestly, because I was out of the gate bad, so I didn't have yeah. to bother you every week with, like, I know your ranking says this, but what do you really think? Like, give me the real info. <laughs> yeah, but I sport, know you, you're you writing the done info. what I did. What's you that? Should, what I did was I drafted Jonathan Taylor and Austin Eckler and Justin Herbert. I Those mean, were good ideas, and you yeah, made the finals, that's right? that's what I did, and I, you know, had the number one rank in the QB list staff league. So, which is disgusting considering how much, how little you know about football and how yeah, much you don't I, even yeah. like it. Nick never asked me for anything. You know, no, because I, I was, because, you know, it's fancy football. <laughs> yeah. J Jake, I mean, always been my guy in football. Not that he's not great at baseball. I just don't need as much help. I don't believe. But uh, you're a football yes. god, you're a baseball god, you're a dual sport god, which is hard. It's hard. When I was first kind of getting in the industry, I tried to do both, and it was really difficult. I respect that you're able to do both so I well. Would say, I mm -hmm. would say football god and more like baseball demigod, like a little bit lower. <laughs> That's, <laughs> I know you put football <laughs> higher. I mean, football pay, pays the bills. If Nick and I were smart we and wanted money yeah. over everything, we'd have gone yeah, yeah. football heavy. But, uh, right. you know. <laughs> We're idiots. But what we're doing here today on the fireside <laughs> is uh, we're doing some like specialty awards, some of our favorite things about the game, uh, and also some picks for the upcoming year that are that are a little bit off the beaten path, like a dark horse for a no hitter, a surprise cycle, all sorts of stuff like that. We're gonna keep it fun here in this hour on the specialty awards. So let's get in because we're a little bit behind due to my tech issues. My fault. Always seems to be my fault because I'm a loser. But we're making up for it. Let's start with an easy one. Nick's going to love this one. Favorite pitch. We're on PitchCon at Pitcher List. Why wouldn't we start at the top? Nick, let's start with you. What is your favorite pitch? And I'll let you give a secondary, because I know you probably can't just go with one, but you can't name six either. So you, you get one and then like a specialty. Okay, but I'll yeah. let you do that. But Nick could do like 14 if he wanted to. So I'm gonna, <laughs> I got to try to keep him in the guardrails. You you with your three, I, I trust you. But Nick, well, I got to keep. Hold on real quick, not to cut it. So did you do favorite pitch period or a favorite pitch by pitcher? Because that's what I actually did. I mean, my favorite pitchers, like pitch from a pitcher in the majors. Like, okay, I so that's, like that's where I went. Yeah. Ball or yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I, right. I, and I, okay. I have two as well, well, by the way. So I'm I didn't know if Nick of... can throw like 15 different pitches. Like that's why I told you I didn't. I don't want to do batting practice against him because he was going to just. <laughs> oh, he, me. he embarrassed me, but he wasn't. Th it wasn't because he was like trying to gas everyone. Well, well, it's, no, it's because I. Well. No, it's because I was trash. I was just roasting myself, not uh, not promoting you. No, no I wasn't guys, hyping you. you. I don't know why all the self. No, that was amazing though. The, that was amazing at Staten Island that you were just throwing batting practice to everybody. Yeah. What a great time that was. was but all right, dream. give us give us your your your. I'm sure you have that multiples. Was, give us one. I didn't know any of you, and you're all like amazing. I'm like, this is this is a dream come true. All right, fine. Um, first one that came to mind, Sandy Alcantara's fastball. I can watch all day. I mean, uh, that's just. I the, wasn't surprised that you went with so, Sandy Alcantara. So overwhelming, like 99 with amazing movement, biting into guys. Like you see them swing at pitches that are about to hit them with a fastball and not like a breaking ball. When and we were kids, could you ever have? Could you ever have imagined a hundred mile an hour sinker? No, it's like it's, a legit really sinker. Dumb. It always used to be that like the harder you threw it, the the more it would take away the sink. So right. you know, a sinker slash two seamer was always a, a couple miles slower than the four seamer. Today it's like, nah, I'll throw it at a hundred and it'll still have the same movement as like a Brandon Webb sinker. Like that's right. so unfair. I actually so threw out, a natural sinker because I have no speed. So it just kinda, so it always <laughs> just kind of sank. It I just like that. died when it got there. Um, Nick, if you have a secondary one, I'll come back to you. But let's get yeah, your first one, Jake. 
My first one? Your, your first so, of three. It doesn't have to be your highest ranked, however you want to go. Three uh, to one, one to three. You no, can do number no, two I, first. I, you know I love ranking. I, I, I got to go hometown. Well, hometown. Hometown, my team. Favorite team, the, yeah. The, the, the Crom Slider. Yep. Holy, I, I, I knew mean, that was coming. You knew I was going to go there, especially for the fact that I, I looked this up because I remember them talking about it in the broadcast, just to double check. It was almost two miles an hour faster than any non-fastball strikeout pitch. Like, That's just, insane. Like, it was a strikeout pitch that wasn't. It was the highest non-fastball speed. Does that you get? You kind of get what I'm saying there. So like, yes, that's in, that's insane. He was basically throwing almost 95 miles an hour. It's it, it, slider, and which means it's it's faster than a lot of fastballs too. Not only right. was it the fastest non-fastball, but it's faster than a good handful of so fastballs, dumb. which is ridiculous. It is so Goes dumb. back to my thing earlier. If I told you that there's going to be a 95 mile an hour slider in the future, you just said you're insane, dude. It'll break somebody's arm. I, I freaked out yes. when Syndergaard did it back. Yep, in like I remember the the Worthen slider. Like, we were all what? like, "Whoa, this is <laughs> this is new." <laughs> and her, him that, and Harvey you know? were both throwing those crazy sliders, and it was like. This is scary, but it it works. I mean, hopefully Degrom gets back healthy. But that's a great one. I knew I knew you'd go there. My first one is the Frankie Montas splitter. Mm. You know, I'm a big splitter fan. I, I understand Nick's trepidation with them. I, I I don't disagree with that. But it's when Nick even agrees that when they're working, they're beautiful. They're so fun. It's just that they're difficult to have consistency with. But both Kevin Gosman. And Frankie Montas found consistency last year with them, and they were just a lot, a lot of fun to watch. I also love throwing them in the show. You know, Jake, we talk about uh, kind of mixing in the show with things too. So that's another thing is I love throwing splitties in the show. I love show. the knuckle curve. The that's knuckle nice. curve is a lot of fun too. That AJ Burnett card with his knuckle curve, the flashback card, I love that. So yeah, Frankie Montas splitter, I love it. I still see even more for him. He had the breakout this past year. I think he can go even higher. So that's my number one there. Okay, Jay, uh, okay. do you have another one, Nick? Ones. I mean, I, yeah. I, I got to mention two sliders from two young guys. Yes. Um, Aaron Ashby's and okay. Tan Houck. Yeah. Oh, oh, I the had the that Hulk on my sl- list. The Houck slider, yes, oh, is is just, brilliant. Something else. like The one the that starts in one box and ends up in the other. <laughs> yeah, just unbelievable. It, but a quick reminder to the chat. We're just doing current, by the way, for all of these. I love your historical stuff. Yeah, these are Definitely great. keep chatting about it. But just for the purposes of this, we're doing only current stuff right now. But yeah, the Houck yeah. slider and the Ashby slider, both reasons why both of them are on breakout slash sleeper lists all over the place. Even though neither has a locked in hundred percent firm spot yet sure uh, all right jake give me give me another one that you had the hawk slider so, so what's the third yeah, on your list I did. the third was and we actually just talked about him when he changed his pitching rotation or like wind up and that's actually morton's curve Morton curve yep yeah, i almost put exactly. that it's 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 god that's so hot when it's cooking. i just love movement like that yep. i could never do <laughs> Exactly. The the nasty movement like that. And it almost made me put the uh, uh, trying and sinker on it, too, because of how much movement he gets. But I'm going to go with another one that's that's kind of a, a duh one, but we have to give it love. And he also has my body type. So I love Chris Sale and his slider is obviously disgusting. Yes. And we know how can Sly- and Sale have been getting a righty lefty comparison of one another because of their sliders. So it's basically just an extension of the Hulk pick. I had to give some uh, love to the Sale slider. Any others on your list? Nick, Nick, any more? I mean, so many young guys. Essentially, anytime a young guy comes up and does something that is absurd, and it just freaks me out. So all of the clan and, and le- stuff. Unless it's, unless it's Ranger Suarez. Yeah, well, he's... <laughs> And and they're doing something amazing with their stuff. I know, I know. I'm just, I'm just. I, just I feel like that. I, I feel like that one's gonna his, burn you. He avoided the middle of the plate with his fastball. I know, and he, and it was an easy schedule. I understand. I understand. There you but go, I'm, Paul. Oh, there we go. Yes, yes. Okay, <laughs> that makes it for me. Barkley's back on screen for those just listening on audio. Beautiful, beautiful dog. I too named my first dog after one of my favorite athletes, Curtis. Uh, rest in peace. But yeah, Barkley, what a beaut. I love that. I want to meet that dog so badly. Anyway. Moving on. Let's go hitter style now. Sorry, Nick. Got to do some hitter stuff. We're going to do favorite (laughs) stance. And again, there's amazing historical ones. I got to be honest, because of probably because of the science and and learning things, we have fewer unique stances these days. I feel like there's probably just uh, it's been more uniform, but there's still some that stand out. Jake, I'm going to start with you because Nick hates hitters. Who'd you put for stance? (laughs) Uh, yeah, if we were doing historical, I would have said Bagwell just because I still do not know how he was able to stand <laughs> the like squad that. And, and to have that I much tr- power down there. I know. I've tried to replicate it. It's impossible. <laughs> to get, but... I couldn't get any load whenever I would try to. And I wasn't no. a very good hitter anyway, but I couldn't do anything in his stance. 
baffled by it. Uh, but I would, I, I, I was trying to go through about like five that I could think off the top of my head, but I'm going to go with a young one. And he's partly also one of the most fun, play- actually probably the most fun player in baseball is Fernando Tatis Jr. Yeah. I just, I just love everything about his approach at the plate and this swing. And just, I almost went with Makata almost. That's a good one. I, I really, I, They're I both, settled down and went with Tatis. They are both swag personified. If you're just trying to mm. describe that word to somebody, you just say, yes. go look at Fernando Tatis. And now while you go, because you want to see Barkley, it sounds like Barkley has to go to the bathroom. So <laughs> okay, so then we, we can shift to Nick. Nick, <laughs> who, who do you got there uh, for uh, a nice so, stance? So I think for me, um, I mean, yeah, as you mentioned, like the, the more like ridiculous ones are super fun. Um, but at the end of the day, there are two to me that really stand out. One is, I mean, I guess he's technically still active and all it's Albert Pujols in the way that yeah. he's just kind of this stoic, um, the, the setup uh, you know, is like there. quiet and, just, and then exactly everything he's is ready. So perfect. And the same way, but more menacing to me is John Carlos Stanton because, oh God, yes. Uh, because what's crazy to me and when it comes to like batting mechanics with everybody, it's normally, you know, you're told as a kid, you line up your feet, right? You line it up. And why you do that is because when you step towards the pitcher, that means you're geared up to go straight to center, um, with your timing of your bat, right? When it's your bat is flat relative to your feet, then that means it's going to center field. Right. Um, and you're told like you step in the bucket. That means you're opening up, you're stepping towards third That's base. That's what I always right-handed. did. That was right. I mean, I did too. Issue. But that is essentially what you don't want to do because that means, I mean, you do if you're hitting inside pitch, but then you can't hit an sure. outside one. Exactly. Stanton, because he's so quick, because his bat speed is so fast, he actually purposely does the opposite where he is set up so that he hit the outside pitch. So he's super closed and pretty much dares anybody like try to jam me inside you can and he can get so around did on you hear everything me, yeah. did you hear me yell yes from outside i, I did <laughs> i did I, I thought that's what it was too i was gonna say were you cheering the pick or telling barkley to get uh yeah because it's so good and, it's and unbelievable see, how also, he can get to everything he also the way because he's so closed how menacing it is it isn't like just looking at you this way it's closed like barely with some side eye and then i'm gonna open up oh, and show you man this it is. it's like out of an of anime me. or something yeah no i i, I love that perfect. one i think the stanton one is a bit slept on um i think ge- generally right. speaking jen carl stanton is slept on in terms if of appreciating third his greatness. base and saw oh, him I, at home. I, I would I would move off third base. I'd be like, I, nope, I, I I'm would, done. And- <laughs> I'd be in left field. I'd be standing right next to the left field. Like, I'd up, be dude? behind the, uh, the third base coach person. <laughs> okay, I'm going to be here for a little bit, dude. Um, okay, I got one that you all might not be familiar with uh, being unique and, and interesting. Are you guys familiar with the antics of Jose Trevino? No. No. It is... It is something uh, to behold. Nick, if I send you a link, can you share it? Uh, I, if it's a video, I can download it and share it. Okay. Let me, uh, yeah. let me see if Actually, I can yeah, find one If it's a link, I think here. I can share it too. Yeah, send it to me. Jose me, Trevino's uh... stance. I think the best I'm going to be able to find is batting stance guy doing it. But he goes through so much. If you're familiar with batting stance guy, you know that, uh, that he, he doesn't miss as far as getting these right. I'm sending it to you on Twitter. So we're gonna okay. watch batting stance guy do it, and uh, and and you'll get an idea of what Jose Trevino's all about. And as far as historical ones, I see Julio Franco be mentioned. Loved that one. Growing up in Detroit, I loved the Mickey Tettleton just kind of holding the bat uh, like parallel to the ground, and then and then he would get a setup. Uh, Tony Bautista, the, the Sheffield had to sl- had to so he s- had to slow down. Yeah, because he, he was, was so moving quick. so fast. Like unbelievable. And then how did Franco get to anything when he was up here? <laughs> and Council was like that too. Craig Council was Please, all the way up here. Do me a favor. Go to right, a Rangers game, a Texas Rangers game. You're gonna see a catcher named Jose Trevino who's gonna entertain you in all directions. Sorry if you're listening as a podcast. Upside down. Gotta watch PitchCon. It's on YouTube. YouTube.com slash pitcher list. Wait, he does this all before he gets in the box? Yep. What? I'd plonk him. <laughs> Wait, it, it only gets better <laughs> or worse, depending if you're the pitcher, I guess. Just when you think it's normal, it amps up. Oh, yeah. That's the best part. No. <laughs> it really the does yes, every time. Business. No. <laughs> 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 uh. 
And then he just waits, yeah. That's amazing, you, Jose. You're doing great. That that is amazing. So yeah, Jose Trevino was my pick there. Batting Who stance G on Twitter if you want to. Just Google Jose Trevino stance. It'll come right up with the batting stance guy video if you want to see it. He goes through a lot of uh, uh, mechanics <laughs> there. Did you guys have anybody else that you wanted to shout out here before we move on to our I next I mean, one? someone in the chat, um, I think it was Sacra said Juan Soto just for the shuffle. Yeah. Oh, and I love the shuffle. I mean, I got to say, if I was a pitcher, it would drive me insane, which is the goal, right? Like, I would be triggered by it. Uh, because I'm weak willed, <laughs> so I would let it get in my head and bother me, which is exactly what I know. So, that somebody got mad at me because I got triggered by Johnny Cueto, and I was like, It's cut because it's kind of like, ah, oh, you're kind of bush leaguing it a little yeah. bit last and, year. And again, like, I like, like it, but if I was out, a batter, better. It, it, yes. I would also, again, I, I can appreciate it from afar, but then if I was a player, I'd be like, You son of a gun, I would be so annoyed <laughs> by it. Just I really would. with your normal pitches, yeah, like, you don't need to shimmy, dude. I'm gonna strike out. Just get me out normally. <laughs> Don't try to embarrass me. I totally agree with you there. And I think All right. Actually, um, there's an article on our site on Pitchlist uh, about though when you change your windup, when you actually like stuttered, how much it actually affects things. Did and it help him? Check it out. I I don't want to spoil out. the results. All right, I, don't spoil it. I yeah. will check it out. We definitely check out um, that article. One who recently retired because he basically had to change because he was definitely cheating. You guys remember Carter Caps? Oh my! God. How he would hop off the mound. And uh, then they altered his stance or, or, or the rules of what he could do. And all of a yeah. sudden he was in that's ineffective. That's when you go to the ballpark and try to beat the fastest pitch. Like exactly. Doing that jump and you do the thing. crow yeah. hop. That was his yeah. regular pitch thing. That was impossible in MLB The Show. If you, you like, it, it got to a point where if like you were in a tournament and you use Carter Cabs, you were seen as the cheeser who's like, <laughs> oh, you're so lame. You have to use Carter Cabs. Odd Caps. job that you were using. Yeah, it was job. odd job <laughs> slash like Michael Vick type level, like where if you use Carter Cabs, you got those three are put off in a box. Like how dare you use those guys? Um, all right, more Nick speed here. Let's go the other way. Best wind up. Yep. I'm going to start this one here. I'm going to take one of the easier ones. I'm going to go submarine Tyler Rogers, mm. how he's affected. I mean, I understand how he's effective. I still, I always marvel at submariners. Always have, uh, always like Dan Quisenberry, rest in peace. Growing up, Chad Bradford got, gained popularity due to Moneyball. Uh, but some of these guys literally scrape their knuckles uh, on the ground when they're throwing some of their pitches, which is just wild to me. You mentioned Brad Ziegler earlier. Um, he's a friend of yours. Awesome. I, I, I'm blown away by it. Darren O'Day gets down pretty low. I just love it. So Tyler Rogers is the pick there. I love what he does. <laughs> and I'll throw my second one in just because it's a guy I already mentioned. Chris Sale, obviously. I love Chris Sale. Mm, yeah, Built like me, Good and call. he's a god. But yeah, Tyler Rogers, Chris Sale. Nick, what do you got for uh, best so, windups? So I'm going to upset Jake and say one that is not actually my pick, but I just want to get it out of the way just in case he doesn't say it. Um, Jacob DeGrom is so smooth. Uh, oh yeah it's just it's just it's yeah, actually like the best mechanics you have that was my pick. alex chamberlain's um he's literally uh, perfection yesterday was about vertical approach angle and how jacob de Grams is the best one um that's because of mechanics uh so awesome stuff there but my favorite is joey lucchese oh uh, with the, his uh, curve. up down most ridiculous thing ever like what are you doing man like <laughs> this is and i will say that for a lot of people it's like okay this can't be repeatable uh, when you watch like mechanics and wind up and stuff, just look at where they get to certain points and like where their body is at certain moments. Like for example, when does the the arm come out of the glove and when does he get it up and you know where is he when he lands? And Lucchese hits it every time. All the other stuff doesn't matter. It's like you know you're you're getting to the cities. It doesn't matter what route you took. Mm -hmm. So it, it's pretty amazing that he does it right. And yeah, it's just. You look at it and go, oh, that's Joey Lucchese. And that's, to me, the coolest part of a good windup. When you know right away, right? Yeah, if someone imitates mm. it, too. And, you know, the unfortunate part, last year, he was having some success. It was very early, only 38 oh, innings. Yeah, like, he was pitching pretty well, and then he got hurt. Uh, he had, was, like, this one really start. was like, oh, he's really good. Oh, now he's done. Okay. Well, that is the, that's the <laughs> Lucchese experience, too, is that, like, you watch him on a, the right night, and you're like, this dude is a stud. And then you watch him the next right. night, and you're like, how is he above high A right now? Yep. Like, he can vacillate more than anybody out there. <laughs> um, all right, Jake, what do you got for some wind-ups? Because I know you got uh, He took one. I was going to say DeGrom, because the biggest thing about it. DeGrom, they like, is, well, because it's every spot is consistent, but the biggest thing is I like the effortless. And I, yes. every time I watch him, I'm like, how is he throwing over 100 miles? Like, I just, and does not look I'm, like he tries? No, so then I would say the next closest is his new teammate. I would say Max Scherzer is very yeah. similar 
on the other aspect is like you just don't believe he's actually throwing that fast. Like Syndergaard is similar like the stand. It looks like he's doing everything he can to throw 97 miles an hour. Yeah. Grom's like, oh, I just tossed it up there. 102. Oh, right. there I, totally, I totally agree. It looks like he's not even breaking a sweat there when he's just dusting everybody and there's something in that effortlessness and that simplicity that i love it's funny we laud it for somebody like jacob de grom and then somebody who's going to be a teammate again this year like robinson cano he's effortless with everything he's able to do and he's regarded as like not trying or late it's, it's weird how well he also had pad help so you know well i i'm not i'm putting that aside i'm talking about like the way he would field it was seen because it's it so wasn't smooth. flashy it was smooth that it wasn't trying hard which i thought was weird right. we don't do that with pitchers uh that have right. we 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 laud it i like the kershaw shout out because it always looks like the ball mm. should come out a second earlier exactly like, like, it, like it comes out like late it's weird to me watching that, him that is a good Definitely. call out too there's, um he was one consideration more for me that yes. you, essentially the hunter pence of windups is alex wood oh yeah that's a good and that's a good that needs comparison to get a mention too. in here of just like yep. you should how does the ball even come out like, yeah that's a that's it, a very good call and i oh like the God, hunter pence it, comp a lot weird it's crazy and i it, love it it really is. And he's, I mean, he's so good. That's the thing. Like injuries have been the only thing that's really derailed him. Uh, success is there whenever Alex Wood is healthy outside of the, those like 10 inning seasons where he's got an ugly ERA or whatever, but he's been great. All right, let's move on from, uh, from, you know, how they set up and what they're doing there to, uh, to some events, a dark horse, no hitter. We know you go look at the list of no hitters. You, we know anybody on any given day can drop a no hitter. Uh, Philip Umber has a perfect game. That's all you really need to know. Bud Smith, Jose Jimenez, <laughs> tons of others. Studs can throw no hitters too. Roy Halladay, we talked about him earlier, has one in the playoffs for crying out loud. So it can range the entire, uh, you know, it, it can run the gamut. So let's find a dark horse. Jake, let's start with you. Who's a dark horse candidate for a no hitter this year that you'd be like, Absolutely. Dang, that's pretty cool. Oh, well, see, you kind of like, I don't know if he's dark horsey enough now from your well, description that you just went there. That's okay. I was, because I also think he's, he wouldn't be my, but I also think he's a dark horse Cy Young candidate. So we'll kind of throw that, but I can see Max Freed. I think he gets oh, one this year. Uh, he think, is my is Cy Young pick? pick. He's my Cy Young pick. <laughs> he's so not I'm, my Cy Young pick. No, I'm, I'm, with, I'm with you I, on I, that, but okay, go ahead. Yeah. I, I legitimately actually believe He's I, if I'm looking at the National League just alone, I would say like he if you had Vegas odds, I'd put him inside the top five of like throwing a no hitter in yeah. 2022. I, I, I could definitely see that. Um, and especially if the defense, uh, you know, because obviously you need a good defense on a given night. If he's got the right defensive setup, that, low whip, high strikeout. Yep. Like the, the only concern I would ever have for somebody like him is the pitch limit. But he's already shown he he's shown when he's healthy, game, he can go. Yeah. Yeah, I like that one, Max Freed, um, and I, I I would love to see it because you know could help his Cy Young candidacy. Nick, who do you got for a dark, dark horse Cy Young? A well, dark horse. as a joke, because I want to make it so that this person is mentioned in every single thing. I'd say the dark Dylan horse sees. for not throwing a no hitter is Jacob Degrom. <laughs> oh, for not throwing. <laughs> uh, but I. I, it's it's, kind does of he get you the guys, most almost non hitters? Right. Like, yeah. yeah. Every, he, he's the day like, every time he one throws, hit. it's like Son it should be a no hitter. You guys remember? <laughs> so. You guys remember Dave Steeb and how? I mean, uh, well, sure. I mean, you know, I know I'm a little bit older, but like he threw a million one hitters, and several lost in the ninth. But he oh, had man. a ton of no hitters before he finally got one. Uh, Degrom, right. I mean, he's a no hit god too, or a, a it, one hit, two is, hit god as well. The Sackers in the chat says and still doesn't get a win. Exactly. Amazing. Yeah. Uh, but uh, no, I, I'm actual dark horse. It's actually something you guys have been kind of hinting at is you need to have good defense behind you. So I'm going to say it's good Lewis. defense and is going to get the innings and is a true dark horse. So like, hey, if he has it, like they're not going to say like, oh, no, we can't let him overthrow this guy. Steven Matt's there. It's a good uh, one. I think Michael is that same thing like, too. No one is going to think of Steven Matt's when it comes to no hitter. But yeah, all right. He'll get the opportunity to do it. Doesn't actually have like a 15% strikeout. Ray has over 20% normally, and has mm -hmm. the best defense behind him. So, Stephen Math, Dark Horse. Yeah, I think that, and I can't wait for July I think that's a great when call. this is quoted. <laughs> wait, and you could throw Michaelis and, and Hudson in there too. Obviously, Wayno, but he's less of a Dark Horse because uh, he's coming off that excellent year. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I like his name. You were describing that pick. I like went defense. And well, obviously, Correa might not be back, but I thought I, well, when you were just setting it up, I thought you were but, possibly going Houston. Pe Pena's defense is good. Um, so if, yes, if they do go with Pena, 
the defense is the one piece that will definitely be there. I'm going way off the map. Um, I'm picking Lorenzo. Michael Lorenzen. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> because <laughs> it's a dark horse for a no hitter. Oh, this is, um, this is a dark horse. All right. I I still feel. I still feel some CJ Wilson vibes here. I feel like remember when CJ Wilson converted to starting, we were like, what? Why? Like, this is not going to work. You're 30. <laughs> like this is, this is insane. Or he was 29. And then he goes and puts up four straight 200 plus inning seasons of really, really good work. I don't know if it's going to be quite that good, but I think Lorenz is going to surprise here uh, with his conversion. Now he's coming off of a rough season. He only had 29 innings. It wasn't his best work, but this is a guy who can miss bats. Um, and I think if they commit to this starting thing, he's 30 years old, he could have that that dream night. I think obviously most of his starts will probably be on the five, six inning range if this works out. But that one special night for Michael Lorenzen, dark horse, oh, no hitter. That. that sounds great. Super dark horse. All right. I got an even better surprise cycle. So uh, let's let's go oh, ahead and move on oh, to the dude. surprise cycles here. Let's start with Jake. Jake, who could who could drop a surprise cycle this year? Because the triple obviously is the biggest part. Um, mm -hmm. Who could do that? I'm going to say I was a little bit surprised he didn't have one last year. I'm going to go just slightly north of me to Baltimore and Cedric Mullins. Said the entertainer. Think, Let's go. That'd I be mean, a fun one. I can't wait to get one last year either. I, I double checked to make sure he didn't. And I saw there was also no, obviously shortened season, but there was none in 2020. But I yeah. legitimately expected to see him on the list and be like, I'm not going to pick him. But then when I saw he wasn't on the list, I'm like, holy crap, how did you like, uh, get one? I, I might as well. Yeah, he had five triples, and I guess he could never mix those in. And he hit 291, too, so the hits were coming. Right. Uh, yeah, he's a good candidate for sure. And with the fence move back, maybe he hits that, hits that, uh, that fence a no, little bit. No, moved in. Or, no, it was yeah, back, moved I in thought. in left field. Or move back. Yeah, sorry. I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah. So I was saying yeah, he could yeah. hit the the like fence, bounce off, and then get a triple. He's got the speed to get a triple. Those were some great seats ways. too. I'm I'm annoyed they got rid of it. just for more. Like I sat down there a lot. Like that's a great mm. spot to sit. We will talk more about Camden later. It is a wonderful spot to sit. Uh, I wonder. I wonder what sort of effect it's going to have. Right. Like you know, we never know. We always overrate those things in fantasy because we we hear and we're like, oh my god, John Means will never give up another home run. It's like, well, he probably will. <laughs> He probably will. But, uh, yeah, I like said Mullins. Nick, what about you? Surprise cycle. Well, I might take yours. Akil Badu. Love that uh, one. Love uh, that because, one. Because, I mean, it's a big park. You know, you can get a triple in there. He's got the speed for it. He's got the power for it. He was um, a heavy consideration for me, I will tell you. I'm all, I'm all for Akil Badu doing good things. I, I love know? it. It's a, he, it's a great pick. Akil Badu, not staying Akil, away from his team. Akil Badu don't. You know? <laughs> I think he's got all the skills to do it. I think that's a great call out. Uh, mine is uh, light years away from both y'all's. <laughs> is it Ortega? Because that's the other one I considered. No, it's uh, Fran Mill Reyes. Brandon Nimmo. What? Fran Mill Reyes. It's Fran Mill Reyes. <laughs> he hit two triples last year. Okay? He's got to time them. So he just has to time them properly. <laughs> it's it's not hard. This is easy, Fran Mill. You got this. So the reason I picked him, right? Obviously, wait, it wait, does wait, not was one of them speed. like one of those legit, or was it like one of those triples where I, the I left fielder runs right past it? it and it's like, yeah, <laughs> these both have to be should have been the, an error. <laughs> yeah, the yeah, fielder yeah. fell down, but they just didn't call the error because it was in Cleveland. I don't know, but he had two triples, so I need <laughs> another one, and I need it on a night when he hits a homer, double, and single as well. Fran Mill Reyes surprise cycle. You'd be surprised, Ooh. wouldn't you? Yeah, well, that, that's yes. a good point. That's an actual surprise. <laughs> Thank you. All right. I like y'all's picks. Y'all's picks have a, a 9 million percent chance higher uh, to, to pan out than mine with Badu like and Zed Mullins. Thank you. Appreciate that. All right, moving on. Manager we want to see get tossed. Now, did was oh. this uh, tossed from their team, like get off their team, or no. get tossed out no, of a game? From because, a game. Yeah, okay, yeah, that's yeah. what like, that's I want the, to see them. Actually have two. That's the way I played it. it. That's the way and I played it. get tossed. It. Okay, perfect, and, and, perfect. And to me... Personally, I'm going to just take this one. Yeah, you Gabe start. Kapler, every time. I think oh, it's yeah. just the most enjoyable. Like, anytime you've heard the sound clips, too, it's the most reasonable thing ever. That's the thing. He are, like he debate bros it. Like, come on, man. You, it, you really got to look at it from this angle here. <laughs> There's just something about it. It goes, okay, that's. The, I think it may be the right thing. But, you know, I don't know. You know, I mean, yeah, just, Had you just considered Gabe, it like this, though? Yeah, As opposed to it, most it, guys just screaming their head off, swearing at them. See every vein come out. It, it's, yeah, uh, man. Gabe Kapler to me. I love Gabe Kapler. He's great. All right, Jake, who do you got? Got one in both leagues. I, um, I'm, I'm interested. Now that he's back, I'm, I can't wait for Showalter to get tossed again. Oh, yeah. I, I, wanna, 
I, I am waiting for a show Walter toss. And then on the complete opposite end of the spectrum, because I don't really ever remember Katsai getting that upset. I just want to see what oh, it's yeah. like for mm. Katsai to get thrown from a game. I just I want to see him get mad because I'm always ex I'm always interested to see like the first tossing from a from a head coach. Exactly when, when they when they you know bur burst the bubble on their very first one. It's it's always fun. It's like oh he fi he finally got tossed to that yeah. end. I don't know if he's been tossed before, but I'm with you. Like same right. in the Mark Katsai vibe. Yeah. I picked Rocco Baldelli. Mm. Uh, maybe he's been tossed. But uh, I don't see him as like a hothead, so I want to see him get worked up. Yeah. It's like that um, with Craig Council too, kind of. Yes, like like, Craig, we, like I almost said Council supposed to be doing this. I think part <laughs> of it is yeah, we we have our perception of them as players, and so we're we're projecting that onto them as as managers, and we're like ah, I don't I don't know, does he ever get mad? It's like of course they do, but do they get enough to go crazy? Uh, Kevin Cash was my secondary there in the same exact vein as mm -hmm. the Mark Codse pick. So great picks all around. I really like that, and we'll see if these guys get tossed this year. All right, player you want on your favorite team. You gentlemen are fans of the two New York teams. I'm on Detroit. So if you could pick a player, Nick, to put on your team, star, medium, or lower end, who would it be? I just want Pablo Lopez to be in my city. That's all. Oh, that'd be I, I just want, you know, he's just, he's just the best dude. <laughs> They could that, trade that, for that, him. I mean, they have know, so maybe, much pitching, and the Yankees just, need just, pitching. Just Pablo Lopez, man. Just, hey, come on. Just come to New York, dude. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Jake, who do you want on the Mets? I mean, honestly, it would have a guess. Just for Fernando Tatis. But let's just, he's too obvious. Right. So I'll go, hey, look, this legitimately might still happen. He's still sitting out there. Uh, I know that people were saying he was going to get $300 million a few years ago. You Carlos might not Gray? know who I'm talking about. No. Or no. Chris Bryant. Chris also Bryant. Also because yeah, yeah. people say I look a little bit like him, which I don't you ever do? understand because I don't you think I do it. Like like no, he's got a bunch. I see it. He's got a mus muscular it's face. the eyes. It's, much it's the eyes. It's all in the yeah. eyes. Yeah. But I like no, the third kinda, base outfield, like and we need your whole third face. Base. I, I see that. My no, no, it's like yeah, no. I like I see. If you had the marble eyes like him, it'd be over. Oh, his eyes look like marbles. Like if Chris Bryant and Littlefinger had a baby together, that's that's my face. That's like something. Yeah, that that's that's it. That's, that's actually, really funny. Yeah. <laughs> that's really funny. Nailed it. But no, I just I've always I've been a fan of his since day one. Looks or not. Like yeah. just, I was a third baseman until I split my finger open and then moved to first base for the rest of my life because I'm like, I'm never doing this ever again. <laughs> like, I'm and good. I found out I was I was amazing. John Olerud first base, but I always liked third base inherently. I've always I've Howard Johnson was one of my favorite players growing oh, up. Oh Joe. I've always I've always been a third base guy, so I would love to see that taken care of for the Mets for the longest time because we haven't had anybody since David Wright. Yeah, and I, I like Chris Bryant too. I think he's I think he's a little bit underrated at this point. I think for some reason there's there's a little bit of a he's dislike like for him. He's almost like a real life post hype sleeper at this point because yep. the expectations were like so friggin' high. Yeah, because like, he he's opened still really good. He opened yeah. Rookie of the Year. Did he win the MVP? MVP? Yeah, he he went he yeah. went you know crazy with that so it's like Cubs, well now he's yeah. gonna win 500 mvps and it's like he's just been very good instead of elite right. and he's had some injury issues but i like that one i think he'd be a good fit out there i like chris bryan a lot easy to root for so i went high and low i went one kind of like a sad pick carlos correa because i really wanted him more than Baez <laughs> on the tigers but i'm gonna root for Baez. i'm, I'm a hobby Baez fan uh another guy this is a very low end type of guy uh, i wanted them to make this trade last year but the two guys that we probably could have traded for Zach McKinstry for were Boyd and Turnbull and they were both hurt. So it didn't really make sense, but I think Zach McKinstry still has some upside. I know he's a little bit older, but I, I'm a sucker for super utility guys. I love uh, Jake Cronenworth. I was a big Ben Zobers fan. I jumped on that bandwagon early. So I'm a sucker for super utils. I still you know think what Zach happened to McKinstry last year. You remember Spore? We were in the same league the day I won the high bid and tout. And then two weeks later, Boom, done. <laughs> and the season was toast for him. And he never rebounded. And I got so annoyed. But, he, you know, he's still 27. Tough part is I kind of want him out of the Dodgers because I don't think the time's going to be there for him. Uh, but I still believe in the town. I like Zach McKinstry. And if he was on the Tigers, he could bounce all around. So that'd be fun. So that's my pick there, Zach McKinstry. Let's move on to our next one. Happy for you. <laughs> yeah, she's like, did you need me? She thought I was snapping for her. She's like, oh. <laughs> one, one time I was streaming and um, – it was it was when Jen was gone, so Henry was in here. He doesn't spend as much time in here uh, when when Jen's here. And Miguel Cabrera was going for his five with home run, and he crushes this one late. And I'm like, get get, let's go. And Henry runs out of the room, thinking that I was screaming at him to get out. <laughs> oh, I felt no. so bad. I was like, no no no, come back. You're fine. <laughs> I was just trying to cheer the home run, which it didn't end up being a home run. Anyway, 
Moving on. Best stadium feature. This is pretty open. Mm. You can have some little niche feature that you guys are going to teach us about or something bigger. But let's start with you, Nick. What's a stadium feature that you really, really like? Honestly, I absolutely adore Beat the Freeze. I, I that's, that's that's a good one. That's the, that's a that's really the good thing, one. Man. That's just the best. Like yep. every single it's time, cre- everyone thinks like they're going to win. They're oh down yeah, there. It's and then they start the coasting. Moment. I love when somebody has a big lead. They start coasting. Oh, you can tell best. that they let up, and he just and, zips right by And also, by it's him. like you know, New York. We have um, you know, you have the the train race and stuff. But it's like, oh, that's all predetermined. There's nothing actually to this the entire way. Yeah. It's just whatever. There's the ball game of like the hats. The way to yep. play that, just so you know, the real way to play, because everyone can follow the baseball. You yeah. guess beforehand. You pick a number. Ah, and your okay. friends, and so that's you, to, the, that's to your really randomize now. it. <laughs> that's the true joy of that one. But no, beat okay. the freeze. It's not random. It's not. You don't actually know what's going to happen. It's in real time. You know, occurring in front of you. Way yeah, better I, than all of that. Have, have you ever seen the one, one at Camden where they do the crabs? For the no, I haven't. One? The best part about it is so they do two of them in a row. So they do the first one, and it's try to guess where the crab was, and then they do the second one. It's like now for the visiting fans. And the crab goes in the middle, and the two on the, the one in the middle doesn't move. The one on the side <laughs> just <moves. laughs> That's really good. I like that. I like that. Jake, what's yeah. uh, what's a ball park feature you like besides that hilarious one? So I have two. One is actually outside the stadium. I just love the bay for San Francisco. That's just yeah. I mean, I almost picked to the be bay. able to hit into a bay is just awesome. So like, cool. That, that's just the coolest mm-hmm. thing for totally agree. But, I know a lot of people hate the team, but the entire aesthetics of the seats, the train, how the stadium looks to be able to hit the tracks in Houston, like that, Houston. that entire yeah. left field for me. And I was a fan of the Hill just because it was so yeah, different. Just because it was yeah. so unique. Yeah. Exactly. So randomly different. Tows but I, Hill. I think that's one of the coolest left fields, obviously green monster, but that's too easy to say, but like yeah. that, that left, that left field is one of my favorites. I agree. It's great. Um, you know, I was lucky enough to go to a World Series game this year, and it was and it was open, which was cool because a lot of times during the summer it's not open. Obviously, it's really hot in Texas. I get when it's not open when it's like a hundred, but I don't know why they don't open it when it's like eighty. Uh, but it was open, and it's really awesome there with an obviously an electric environment for the World Series. But the train, like you said, it's really cool. Crawford boxes, so it can yield some extra homers because it is a little bit closer. Good call there on the general left field aesthetic of Houston. I went with an easy one. It's not quite green monster but um i've always been obsessed with the kaufman fountains uh i always i I pick kaufman a lot in video games just to see it uh because i love the scoreboard with it too so i'll throw in the scoreboard with the fountains the whole aesthetic i think is beautiful and uh yeah like i said i used to pick that in mlb the show all the time just to play there but it's a hitter friend or a pitcher friendly park so i stopped picking it because i can't hit very well i have a gripe here with those fountains. (laughs) yes okay yes now Kansas City doesn't have a great camera angle, team. but oh. it's like whatever team. I uh, but the thing is, there are days when it gets really windy. Oh yes, yes, and I know exactly wa- what you're talking about. The blowing so close yep. to the cameras that they have to move the camera even worse to the right. It's awful on those <laughs> and days. It's so bad you can't analyze. <laughs> you're like anything. watching it's from all right feet or left feet. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's it, exactly that's that's funny that is the downside of the fountains yeah it's it ends up being like a 1980s angle where it's like way it's oh, awful God. it is brutal yeah you're 100 percent right on that I can't do anything I'm, um I'm i like uh, i like the uh i haven't been to it i want to go to it but the bob isn't there a bobblehead museum in uh, atlanta which i think is kind of oh. cool and yeah. uh, the aquarium yeah. in miami uh, i thought it was cool I, I didn't hate the fixture I wanted, by the way i only wanted to go to the padres where you could stand behind the outfield wall but i think yes. did they get rid of that i think so what uh what was that feature called? that Someone was like the chat. coolest we'll thing to, i mean you could st- you could look right through the fence it's like yeah that's the coolest thing you're on field level it was it was it. it was really neat um i forget that i thought they had like a name for it but maybe somebody in chat will know all right let's stay with uh team stuff we're gonna get back into players here in a moment but we got to go best announcer crew and uh i mean are okay, we all there, picking, some are we all picking Jake's team? Horse. Yeah, so I, I, that was my pick. I do have a secondary one as well. Here's just really why, Paul. I don't want to make it too easy with the Mets, but they are amazing. It, yeah. Well, because Cullen's great. I was, I loved it with Ron Darling. Still great now. But yeah. the biggest reason is one person who's right there, still right now. 
everything in Keith Hernandez day was the best ever. Like nothing yes. ever <laughs> compares to when Keith Hernandez played fo- baseball. Yep. It's just everything, like nothing lives up to it. Like it, you it can was hit 70 best. home runs mm. and be like, it's not like hitting 30 when I was playing. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's not just, like when I hit 11 one year, you know, that was amazing. I really <laughs> grinded it out to hit 11 homers and I did 14 pounds the, of coke. It's the sounds of, of approval. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, it, um, so you said with Darn is Darling done? Yeah, he only no. occasionally does the mess now because he's oh, over okay. with Fox. Oh, yeah, I, I, I love right. I love when it's the three of them, but even just Keith and, and Gary will work. I will say um, real quick, on the flip side, the one of the worst is what I have to watch, unfortunately, a lot because they're local is the Nationals. Good God. Oh my god, I yes. Watching the Nationals games. They, they always rate I like watch them on mute. three. Yeah, they they rate very low. Whenever uh, you read Santangelo a, a list. first yeah. hit of the game in the first inning, and there oh, goes the no hitter. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't FP. deal with all this hate right now. I'm gonna I'm just gonna steal it. Let's hear. Uh, it. We're gonna go to the I'm gonna go to the Padres here. Where they're still another great one. Cat. Another great one. Yep. Um, so much fun. I, I agree. Mean, seriously, the, those guys have the best time in the booth. Hearing Ursillo laugh is one of the most contagious uh, I to- laughs I- out there. I mean, and I, I have like a couple broadcasts. I need. To I like that they have fun though. Like, and that's oh, great. Oh, yeah, like, that's it doesn't have to be rigid, and yes. and there is that kind of like late night West Coast vibe. Uh, it's wonderful. I totally agree. I love San Diego. It was in my contention list. Giant Giants is another obvious sure. one. I'm gonna go with one that I still love. Um, you know, he's losing a little bit off his fastball because he's older. But I'm Tom Hamilton on the radio uh, with Cleveland. Mm. Always, always loved him. His voice. Um, he's hilarious. He's straightforward. Like he roasts, like he goes in, whether it's on his players or on the, uh, the opposing players. If someone's doing something stupid, he is not afraid to like, let them know that that was absurd. So I love Tom Hamilton. And I've told this story a million times. Anybody that's listened to the pod or watched my stream knows, uh, my dad and I winter or excuse me, summers in Michigan, clear night, depending how clear it was, we could pick up Cleveland radio. Uh, and this is pre-internet. Oh. We're in an AL only league. So we have the Tigers on TV. Uh, if we got lucky, we had the White Sox on WGN instead of the Cubs. And then a Cleveland game, that's six teams of fantasy coverage we were getting for our AL only league. That was big because then you'd make me stay up late at night to watch baseball tonight and take notes of any of the West Coast stuff uh, because he was going to bed. So this is back in the day before the internet, folks. But yeah, so I love Tom Hamilton. A lot of it's nostalgia, but he's still great even today. And he's a radio pick from uh, for Cleveland. also someone who was here on PitchCon two years ago. That is, I call him the Mr. Rogers uh, of baseball. That's Jason Benetti. Oh, um, he's amazing. White Sox. He's amazing. Um, they have Steve a great, Stone. I mean, those, they have a great are, those group. guys are just so good. And they and did Benetti, so well with too, like, like you were mentioning with Hamilton. Yeah. If you will not be biased on no. what's going on on the field. And I love that. Um, they're, they're fantastic. I mean, Benetti is such a joy. He really uh, is. Um, he's really so sharp to too. Yeah. When, he, when they got to do that broadcast with Bill Walton too. How great. Oh was my that? God. I loved it. So I loved great. it. It was so funny. John Miller's amazing. Good call in the chat. Ben Scully, obviously, always a god. Um, yeah, I, there's there's other picks too, but I, I think we hit on the ones that are really really central to giving a great experience. Um, let's move on to our favorite middle reliever. So basically, just somebody who's not like a stud closer. Pretty wide open. Um, Jake, I'll start with you. Ah, uh, Granderall. Uh, mostly also because of his pitches. I just Who? I love Granderall. Oh, Star, Brent, oh, yeah, Brent Star. oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He might not qualify yeah. for this list next year. He could be a closer this year. Next it depends, year. It depends yeah, what they do. It depends year. what they do. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe. Well, for at least right now. No, no, he at absolutely least, qualifies least right now. Yep. Because I almost put him on. That's why I didn't mention it before. He almost made like some of my pitch list, like favorite pitches. Just oh, because he's so fun. You want, oh, yeah, we talk about, yeah, that. that's all. I just, I just love watching him pitch, period. Same. Same. I'm really excited about him. And obviously they have Trinan if they don't bring back Kenley, but Bruzdar seems destined for a closer's role at some point. He's a, he's an absolute beast. Nick, who do you got? Uh, I'm going to go with the Adobe. That is Clay Holmes. Photoshop? <laughs> <laughs> Clay Holmes. Okay. That's really funny. That's this really, throws, really, really, uh, really super funny. hard. Um, they actually found out that the sinker should be thrown more, which is kind of I was going to say, doesn't he have a nasty then, ground ball rate? And it's he's it's absurd. It's, it's one of those cases where you know you could leave the pirates and all of a sudden you do great things. And it's those kind of stories make me so happy. 
Um, and he was just all of a sudden the dominant reliever for the Yankees in the second half of last year after the championship. Yeah, it's unbelievable. It had a 62% ground ball rate in 28 innings with the Yankees, 33% strikeout, 4% walk rate at 28, as if they needed more bullpen. But they kind of do because uh, we're really seeing some some uh, you know wearing down of Chapman. They might they might yeah. have a change coming soon too, to be honest. Uh, speaking of that team, the Yankees, Jonathan Loizaga, Lo Johnny, Johnny Lasagna. Oh, yeah. uh, I'm obsessed with him. You know, so he cool. actually – had mixed league value last year because he was so good and they put him in such leveraged positions that he could again this year because he can get those wins uh while he's doing those multi-inning efforts you know 10 team league no 12 team maybe as a fill-in but 15 team which i play a lot of um, you can use a strong middle reliever and so somebody like that who's thrown 70 innings with great ratios uh, he threw in nine wins I love it, and I don't think we've seen the best out of Johnny Lasagna yet. And uh, I will throw a courtesy shout out to Amir Garrett on the left side. I mean, we all know what what uh, you want wanting to fight the entire Pittsburgh team. I love it. Great guy though. <laughs> kind of know him a little bit through Twitch, and just a really nice guy. You might think he's like some you know angry crazy dude because he wanted to fight the whole team. No, he just takes yeah. up for his boys. Uh, he's a really really nice guy though. I like Amir Garrett a lot. Mm. All right. Anybody else you guys want to shout out, or are we moving on to our favorite bench player? All right, let's do it. Favorite bench player here. Um, I'll start. McKinstry was one of them. Obviously, I mentioned him earlier, but I'm going to say Gavin Sheets. I know on roster resource, he's penciled in right now over Andrew Vaughn. I don't believe that will be the case. I, I know Vaughn struggled against righties. I think they're going to commit to Vaughn, but that'll leave G Gavin Sheets on the bench. I think he's got legit pop. I really do on a better team or not on a better team. This is a very good team. He's on in a better situation where he could just get playing time. I think he's a 30 home run power bat. I love Gavin Sheets, but he might struggle to find enough time to do that in uh, Chicago, but I'll still take him in deeper leagues uh, because I think he'll get enough playing time to knock around, I don't know, 15 to 20 homers. So Gavin Sheets is my official pick there for favorite bench player. I'm going to jump in just in case Jake could steal it because I got nothing else. Okay. Uh, Brett Phillips. Yes. To me. Great person too. Another guy I know through joy. Twitch. You know, he had his moment um, in the World Series. That was just yes. the greatest thing ever. Uh, and it's just anytime you get, you get you understand who Brett Phillips is, it's just oh yeah, you yeah. Just smile and you're happy. Just one of the like, one of the most genuine best dudes in the game too. Yeah, awesome, Phillips, awesome great. person. Brett Phillips, great pick. Jake, who you got? Best bench player, favorite bench player, I should say. Uh, favorite. Uh, I, I hate to go back to the Mets, but third base again. I, I just. JD Davis. I just I love yes. the the pop off the bench. Just it's like one of those I I like two things. If you're coming off the bench, one you're going to be a terror on the base paths, like what mm -hmm. helped the Red Sox win the World Series that one year, or two, you're always a threat to just crush rock one out of the park. Exactly. Yeah. And that's why. And I like but to be clear, I liked him before he was even with the Mets back Ash, like I just think he always deserved a better chance that he got. I love that call out. And he's a, he's a sneak player on MLB the show. He's only a silver card, but he absolutely crushes the ball and he plays above his level. So I like JD Davis uh, for that reason as well. And I, oh, I find myself developing fandoms of players because of their MLB, the show capabilities, which is really <laughs> interesting. Cause I, I used to be like anti Joey Gallo. I was like, ah, you know, he hits, he can't hit my weight. I know the power is there. Um, and then he's a God in MLB, the show. And I just developed a fandom for him via MLB, the show. Uh, now this one, this is a tough one because Nick came up with a category called favorite player no one remembers, but then Jake pointed out that we remember them. So is it normal <laughs> people? It, it, normal I know, people I know. I don't remember. No, I, I like this though. I like this. So uh, somebody who's a bit off the radar, no longer playing is uh, right. I imagine this one could be a, yeah. a former player. So no longer playing. You start. I mean, you it could st be if they don't remember that they're playing still. That's fine too. <laughs> you start. Well, so you that's where I was kind of going with it because damn. mine missed I time like for that injury. Then. Okay. Missed time. Missed time start, for injury. Start, barely start, played Jake. last year. Uh, he is a pitcher. He was supposed to be the closer extraordinaire for the Cardinals. Do you know where I'm Jordan going? Jordan Hicks. Thank you. Eric. Yes. Right, okay. I I am hoping I want to see Jordan Hicks get back into the do you, conversation with the do you think he can hundred start? plus mile hour. I yeah. love I love Hicks. Uh, yeah. It says I just I want to see him back. Period. He's another he one of those barely, guys. He barely played last year. What was it? Twenty innings last year. Yeah, and he's one of those guys with a true one hundred mile an hour sinker. We're talking about it with Alcantara that has yes. disgusting sink 
at that velo. He only had 10 innings last yeah, year. Yeah, he might move to starter. Yeah. I was going to say, do you believe that he can get, I would love if he could. I don't know if he can hold I don't know. up. I think he's going to kind of fall. Like my opinion is I think he might fall into like the Andrew Miller two to three innings. Yeah. I think that. Of- I think and, that's where they should at least like, start. Like him. Aaron Loop was last year for the Mets. Like yeah. that kind of, and like you maybe make a spot start four innings, but that's where your value really lies. I agree. I think that's that's a that's a good one there. And yeah, Jordan Hicks is a bit off the radar because even if you don't, even if you're not as sold on Gallegos as like somebody like myself is, uh, people talk about Reyes, but Hicks is off the radar right now. So I like that you would, did find a yeah. way to and, pick and a for fantasy one. purposes, he's somebody I would rather take than taking somebody that's pushing a four eight ERA or something like that. Yep. Especially in like a draft and hold. Take a shot that Jordan yes. Hicks could become something special. Nick, who's your uh, favorite player that people don't remember? I mean, uh, okay. So I, I have such a soft spot for guys like before. Like Lucchese had that one good start and then he was just done forever. Um, so what happened, I think it was back in 2017, maybe even 16, was there was this guy who was on you know the Royals and he has these four starts where he decides, you know what, I'm going to throw knuckle curves like 40% of the time. And he was blowing up. He was amazing. And then he had a shoulder problem, and he's just tried so hard to get back into it since he even tried with the Orioles. That's Nate Carnes. Oh, what a pull. And just. I remember Nate Carnes. Yep. I get so uh, so much joy after seriously guys that just aren't that good, all of a sudden being really good and having a reason for it. Yep. It's just this wonderful thing that, like, I get to experience all the time because I cover them all year. And it's. I just can't forget, like, you had it, man. It was he there, did. and just injury got the best of you. He did. Oh, Actually, um, it was so a run with, with with Tampa Bay um, that, that spurred him. But you you had the other yeah. teams, right, KC, Baltimore. like, uh, And he, yeah. was, well, he rebounded with KC, and it looked like, okay, he's back on track, but then he got right. hurt again. Injuries just really, really derailed Nate Carnes. That's a good pull. I remember having some excitement about him. A I couple feel, different times because you guys didn't you got me thinking about him. Brendan McKay See, with that. Told with you, Jake. Injuries and yeah. Oh, Brendan McKay is another good one. He was supposed to be mm. everything, and he still could be. I guess he was supposed but, to be Otani. <laughs> yeah, he was. He was a two way player. Um, Brent Honeywell. It reminds me to go to Brent Honeywell after that. Yes. He's out in Oakland. Yeah. Uh, my guy. You guys might not know the name, but uh, I loved the the guy. His name was Termel Sledge. You guys remember that name? No. Yeah, 2004 to 2007, he accumulated a whopping 803 plate appearances in the majors with uh, Montreal, Washington, and San Diego. Uh, he had a little rookie year that that had some noise. He had 15 homers in 446 plate appearances. My buddy Paul and I, uh, Paul Costava, we really liked him. We named our, our fantasy team after him, the Termel Sledges. So, yeah, I just, I've <laughs> always loved, ter- I mean, what a name. It's Termel Sledge for crying out loud. So, yeah, got a I Butch like Butch Husky uh, mentioned in there. Butch Husky. You, you can't mention oh, Butch Husky wow. and not bring up Benny Agbayani either. Benny yeah, Agbayani like, is another, another great one. They kind of go hand in hand. <laughs> and then oh, you have to, Shane and then you Spencer. probably have to. Well, Shane Spencer's a good one, which reminds me of Shane Holter, who played every position in the game one time. Um, I was thinking, oh, Ray Ordonez was another Met that I was thinking of. That this, no, He was a little bit great. more prominent, though. But we're running out of time. Oh, we'll yeah, we are running out of time. Are, Sorry, yeah. here. Um, all right, well, last one then. Last one. Forget the MVP Cy Young. You guys know my Cy Young is Max Reed. Best ballpark food, because I want to get this out. Oh, I'm going to yeah, pick crazy. one. might be a little closer to Jake there. Um, I don't eat a lot. For those that don't know, I'm built like a straw. Um, and so when I go to Camden Yards and I eat six crab cake sandwiches over the course of a night, you know something's going on. Like I, I'm the worst at an all-you-can-eat buffet. I ate four those at the game really good. and I ate two more at the ESPN zone that we went to afterwards to watch the finals that year. It was uh, Orlando against LA, I believe. Six sandwiches in a night, crab cake sandwiches. Like again, for somebody like me, Six five one seventy. I don't eat a ton. That's just how good they were. I could not stop eating them. I have never stopped thinking about them. I probably went a decade ago at this point. Crab cake sandwich, Camden Yards. That's my number one ballpark. Mm. I'm gonna go mm. with a wowful. At, at What's that? City Field. Sounds like something Field, waffle which is, related. Uh, which is a joke Ace- among the the PL staff during the meetup. Uh, Chris Weber and Ben Brown waited online beginning around the I don't know, end of the sixth inning to get their wowful. And, and one. not only did the game end and they hadn't gotten their wowful, there was also a firework <laughs> after that they didn't witness because they still hadn't gotten their wowful. <laughs> and they, we were the last ones, I think, to leave the stadium as they still made it because they had already paid and they couldn't refund it. 
Oh, so they had to get it. it. They had to get it, and it was delicious. So then the next time I uh, we had another little meetup in September. Well, let them know um, what it is. It's a this giant waffle, waffle. It's a waffle. with like any it's toppings It's just a waffle you want. pastry as a cone with ice cream on it and all these everything you would ever dream oh on. Oh my on god! It. And it's it looks so, so decadent good. and and over the top, and it's, it's amazing. And that's it's the right word for it. Decadent is exactly yeah, the right so, word. Great call. All right, I, wrap us I, up, Jake. I will close it out. Yeah. So I have a little bit of Polish. I mean, I'm actually a European mutt. If anybody <laughs> knows what the Pittsburgh cone is, it's not an ice cream cone. It's a cone. It is a waffle cone, but it's got kibasa. It's got pierogies, sauerkraut, I was gonna say, it Russian pierogies. dressing, wow. Swiss. It is the go to PNC Park, which I don't know if they still do the Game of Thrones intro for their lineup, but that's also amazing as a sidebar. But anyway, that's the awesome. Pittsburgh Cone, if you ever go to PNC, is the must-have on your list. Trust me, it is probably top five. Man, it is Amazing. lunchtime, y'all. So you guys just made me hungry yep. to cap off the show. <laughs> but I want to thank both of you for uh, joining me on this fireside here on PitchCon. Uh, Jake, it was great talking with you. We should do this again, the three of us, maybe a little pitching preview. Uh, once both y'all put your ranks out, we can kind of go through the three of us. So I'll be in touch uh, about that back in February once uh, once y'all's ranks come out. Uh, until then, gentlemen, thank you so much for chatting with me. Nick, you're doing an amazing job with PitchCon. Yesterday was tremendous for day one. Can't wait to see the next two days. Gentlemen, take care. Yeah, thank you so much. Jake, Spore, it's always wonderful hanging with you by the fire. And all right, uh, thanks for being at PitchCon, guys. we got to move on to the next one. Take thank care. You. Thanks.